What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Highly Combust Reaction. We're going to be jumping into the next one on our kind of Team C's journey. Plastic Disaster and Ocean Pollution Documentary. Let's jump in. Let's check it out. We already know that there is a giant-ass island of plastic floating between California and Hawaii that we definitely got to learn to figure out. But we also got our Team C's thing going on right now. Hopefully, that's going to be enough to bring some visibility on some of the... Possible things that can be done. Some of the technology that's out there currently. Boy on slot and uh, ocean cleanup. The ocean conservancy. All of these people that are together with the Team C's thing are doing great things. Trying to get 30 million pounds of trash out of the ocean. It's not a cure for it. But it's a damn good start. And a lot of good people in the right direction. So let's jump into this. Let's learn a little bit about ocean pol pollution. Let's go. With over 800 miles of coastline, California is home to beautiful beaches and legendary surf spots. The ocean is part of our lives, whether we swim, surf, or just relax on the sand. However, pollution from plastic products has created a major problem for the ocean and its wildlife. Washed up on our coast, plastic is present everywhere across our beaches and in our waterways is a packaging material plastic if you live near a beach the odds of you having seen a piece of plastic on the beach are pretty high probably higher than the odds that you've ever seen a dolphin at the same beach for some people for some people that live in dolphin thriving areas not the same plus is everywhere unfortunately it doesn't go anywhere once we put it there. Plastic is versatile, inexpensive, and convenient. Unfortunately, with convenience comes a slow, degrading material that is lethal to marine life. Animals can interact with plastics through ingestion. So they think it's food. Plastic will imitate their natural food sources. For example, albatross, their natural food source are, are squid. And so oftentimes we'll find huge amounts of red items in their gut when they die. Plastic is dangerous for sea turtles in a lot of different ways. Um, and it's not just sea turtles, it's all animals that live out in the ocean. So for example, for a sea turtle, if there was, let's say, a plastic grocery bag floating in the ocean, a sea turtle may mistake that for food. For example, a jellyfish, what they love to eat. So may eat that, we call that ingestion, when an animal eats the trash or plastic, mistaking that for food. The worst case of plastic, this is about the nastiest thing in the water, a water bottle. Why? Sea lions do not chew. They have six canines and the rest of these teeth are incisors. So sea lions will grab something and swallow it without chewing it. When this bottle floats around long enough in the water, it grows algae on it and it moves. The sea lion hence grabs it and swallows it. The worst case we've had here is an animal that died and on a necropsy, which means we have to cut them open to find out what caused it, we pull this out of the intestine. It happens a lot more than we think or than we ever see. Sure, we see some animals washed up, but how many are out there just suffering tragic deaths in the middle of the ocean because of us? For absolutely no reason. Ingesting plastic is not the only danger for marine life. Getting entangled in plastic has also become a major threat to many sea animals. The plastics in our oceans are affecting our marine life in a couple different ways. Um, what you may think of most commonly is uh, entanglement. So animals uh, get caught in debris, and this is usually macro debris, so we're thinking about nets, uh, bags, fishing line. They also can get stuck in it. As an avid like scuba diver, I think it's sad that it's gotten to a point where scuba divers now go out with a bag to come back filled with trash. 
Because getting down there and seeing the reef demolished or getting down there and finding just rubbish where there should be a natural wonder. It, yeah, it's really heartbreaking. Like I had to start carrying my own bag. Everybody that I know carries a trash bag now when they dive. So that we can hopefully do a little bit in that little area. But what are we really doing at the end of the day? Nothing unless we all come together to do something about it. Um, sometimes those plastic pieces have little circles involved and they get stuck and we call that entanglement. And again, it's not just the sea turtles. It can be a seagull. It can be anything as big as a whale. When a sea lion gets entangled in plastic, what happens is if they're young, their neck gets stuck in there, and as the neck increases in girth and width, that nylon that doesn't stretch cuts in to the flesh. If the animal is older and it picks up a heavier net, then it's dead, it will probably drown it. Beachgoers leaving plastic packaging on our beaches is not the only source of this pollution. Plastic ends up in the ocean in a lot of different ways. The number one source of ocean pollution today is actually urban runoff. So that's that dirty water that's coming from our city streets. Our all running and sweeping all of the city's garbage through the rivers out into the waterways. Our urban slobber. Um, and so that will go you know, through our storm drains, those little gutters on our streets. Those will meet up with pipes and channels, sometimes with creeks and rivers. And eventually all that water and all the pollution that went with it ends up in the ocean. You have a situation where people's trash from 50 miles inland makes its way to the coastline. We're talking millions and millions of people's trash flow down those flood control channels now, especially after a big rain. And that is really what is responsible for the uh, plastic degradation and uh, pollution which is entering the ocean. Nowadays, it is plastic, plastic, plastics. And it's all a lifestyle issue of how we're consuming and leading this throwaway lifestyle. That most of every, all these uh, plastic items that are discarded are uh, entering the ocean. Yeah, I've seen um, plastic, uh, plastic bags. I've seen diapers. I've seen um, uh, those old, uh, that used to carry the six packs together. I've seen those, so those really bad. Toys, everything, everything. Everything that uh, comes off from uh, uh, the runoff goes right into the ocean and um, it shows, especially after a storm, you can see it. That's why they recommend you don't go into the water about 72 hours after a storm because it's really dirty. We could be doing a hell of a lot better, people. There we go. 15,000 miles from the California coast, a garbage patch twice the size of Texas is floating. Let me tell you, for, a lot of people can't fathom how big Texas really is. A lot of people never really think about it. They just know, oh, the United States. Texas is literally, to drive across the center of Texas takes 12 hours. About something around there. 9 to 12 hours to drive straight through it. That's how big it is. This plastic patch is two times the size of Texas. Imagine driving for that long and still being on plastic in the ocean. Being in the Pacific. The Pacific Garbage Patch is a, an accumulation zone in the North Pacific Ocean where plastic debris accumulates in higher concentrations due to the currents. The Garbage Patch is always changing in size depending on how the currents are moving. So there's really just so much of it that it's not economically uh, feasible to clean up the garbage patch. The ocean is so, so big that um, it would take tens, hundreds of years to be able to clean it all out. What makes more sense is if we stop plastic entering the ocean. Beach cleanups are one way of reducing pollution in our oceans. How crazy is that? With all of our technology in the world, all of our advancement, all of our giant countries, our big boasting countries, it's unfeasible. It's gotten so big that it's unfeasible for us to even try to tackle it. They also provide a fun way to meet others who have the same passion for saving the lives of marine animals. 
A beach cleanup is when a bunch of folks go down to the beach and do a community cleanup. So they go to pick up any sort of trash or plastic that may be on our shores. We have hundreds of people now that turn out uh, for our beach cleanups. We have them uh, bring it, we weigh it, we collect data, we sort it so that they can become familiar with the everyday items that are, are, we've identified as huge problems to the environment, especially the ocean. Walking along the beach and you see about 30, 40, 50 straws, um, other trash, and you just feel impelled to start picking it up and it's a lot more fun to kind of do it as a group. So I'm gonna tell you what I've been seeing the most of at the beach as of late walking around is COVID masks. If you take off your nasty mask, throw it somewhere appropriate. Not in the ditch. Not somewhere where it's going to jump into a river and it find its way out to the ocean. I promise you there are millions and millions of COVID masks floating around in the ocean right now. Just because some of us are a little bit too lazy to throw it inside the proper receptacle. So when Sir Fighter post, it's heartbreaking what we're doing to the world. Right there. And um, I encourage a lot of my friends and fellow mermaid friends to come and support Surf Rider Foundation and other beach cleanups that go on. Another way of preventing plastic from entering our oceans is the banning of plastic products. In 2016, California banned single-use plastic bags. This eliminated more than 13 billion single-use plastic bags generated in California annually. The plastic bag ban in California is a huge step in the right direction. Um, it's allowing, or it is really showing that people are starting to be aware of the issue of plastic pollution. The single-use plastic grocery bag ban was a great victory for us. Um, unfortunately, that's not enough to go ahead and end our kind of single-use habits. It's more of a starting point. It's a gateway issue to get people, consumers, to rethink the way that they are you know, using single-use plastics in their everyday life. Message to the public is, don't buy plastic, don't let them use plastic bags in the supermarket, and also, do away with plastic water bottles. Try to get water that has non-plastic containers that are, are made of cardboard. The uh, ocean's environmental integrity is becoming degraded on an awesome scale compared to 50 years ago. And the main reason basically is population growth. 50 years ago, people were just as trashy as they are now but the trash itself was more environmentally friendly. The ocean is a place of peace and harmony. The choices we make about the products we buy and the methods we use to recycle and dispose of plastic waste will have a huge impact on the future of our beaches and oceans. Hopefully, we'll act responsibly so that future generations can enjoy the natural beauty of our oceans. There you have it. Let these credits run so everybody gets their just credit. We're going to turn that down so we can talk. Um, seriously, a very, very good documentary mentioning some very, very tragic problems that we have. There are literally people out there that don't even know that the plastic island exists. That don't even know it's there. They don't realize how big it is if they do know it's there. The whole thing is... Completely tragic what we're doing to our ocean. See, got me all damn choked up over here. It it's heartbreaking. We expect so much of the earth and we don't give anything back whatsoever. We have learned a lot though. We have learned that a lot of the pollution comes directly from rivers. There have been organizations like Ocean Cleanup out there dropping big machines at the mouths of rivers to catch the trash before it enters the ocean that's another thing that we're working on now with team c's if you guys don't know already there's a huge youtube thing going on right now between creators to boost team c's we're trying to raise 30 million dollars to remove 30 million pounds of trash and garbage and plastic out of the ocean it's being ran by two uh 
it's going between two different organizations, uh, T Ocean Conservancy and Ocean Cleanup. Ocean Cleanup, Boy and Slot, the monsters at the mouths of the river. That's his beast. Seriously, the money's going to be split amongst the two to just get that 30 million out. Will it save the world? No. But is it a good start to show people that when you get together to do things, big things can happen? Absolutely. Is the money going to great organizations that are in it for the benefit of humanity, of the world? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there is a donate button somewhere on this video. All donations go directly to Team C's. Any any ad revenue that the video makes will go directly to Team C's. I appreciate you being here and watching it. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you dislike it, hit the dislike button. Definitely go over and show the original poster. Farida, allow me some love. We're already subbed up. I hope you will too. Uh, until the next one, I'm highly combustible. You guys be happy, healthy, safe. Love you to the moon and back. Peace.